tools to build a worm bin. Hi, it's Cassandra of Wormalicious.com and today we're going to set up a quick and easy plastic tub worm composting bin. Now you should have already downloaded your physical plans from the website. If not, you can go over there and, and download the plans for free. And I'm just going to show you how one is put together. Now, this is an old bin, obviously, that's already put together, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through the steps of putting a bin together because it's so easy. I don't really need to actually do every step for you to understand. Okay, so this is a plastic tub that you get from Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, someplace like that. Notice it is opaque. It is not clear. It is not semi-clear. It is opaque. This is very important because the worms don't like light at all and if they're getting light in the bin they're not going to be happy. And you want your worms to be happy, not unhappy. So the first thing you'll do is turn, oh and one more thing I want to say too is this is like about an 18 gallon, 20 gallon bin and I myself prefer a little smaller bin. I prefer the 10 gallons because when the compost starts building up in here these get really heavy really fast. A 10 gallon bin that's about half full can weigh 30-40 pounds. Easy. So that means something like this half full is going to be closer to 50 pounds. And that's a lot for me to lift, especially like if you keep it on the floor, it can be a pain if you need to move it around or you need to pick it up to get compost out of it or whatever. So I prefer the little smaller bin. Also the width on this, see how wide it is compared to my shoulders? That makes it even harder for me to lift and carry because I don't have the upper body strength. But a 10 gallon is more like this so I can get my arms closer in and it's easier for me to lift. So that's just a side note. You do what you want. But just remember, the bigger your bin gets, the heavier it's going to get. Okay, so after you pick out your bin, the first thing you're going to do is flip it over. And you will drill 8 to 10 holes in the bottom with an eighth inch bit. So here's my eighth inch bit. Okay, I would put it on my drill and I would go, okay, do 10 holes like that. And that would, that would be the bottom for drainage. Now the reason we do eighth inch holes is um, because it's small enough that worms aren't likely to come out the bottom. If you put a, the bigger holes, then they're more likely to come out the bottom. The disadvantage with the smaller holes is that they will clog up, so you'll need to poke them out every now and then with a toothpick or a, you know, a paper clip that you bend straight because they don't, they don't always stay free flowing. So that's the bottom holes. Then, instead of putting holes in the top or the sides or anything like that, what I do is I put these um, these soffit vents in, and I'll show you. This is a soffit vent, okay, and I'll get a close-up of this, but this is a soffit vent. You can buy these at Home Depot or at Lowe's. If you have an Ace, you can get nice metal ones, but I no longer live near an Ace, so I can't get the metal ones anymore. But the plastic ones are fine. I just feel like the metal ones are more durable. So you get these soffit vents. These are two-inch soffit vents. They come in a package that looks like this. If you do go to Home Depot to find them, you will have to hunt around for them. They're in the back corner with all the other vents. But like a lot of times, these won't be out. They'll be in this little nondescript box, and if you open it, that's where they are. So you have to, you, you know, you have to do a little work to get them. They come in pack, packs of six. So like I mentioned, if you have an Ace, you can buy them individually, but if you get them at Home Depot, you have to buy a whole, a whole pack of them. So you get your soffit vents. Then what you want is a hole saw that's the same size as your vent. So this is a two inch vent, this is a two inch hole saw. Two inch vent, two inch hole saw. So then what you would do, and I can't, I can't pop these out because they're in there very well. That's the whole point of using the hole saw and the soffit vent. See, I can't, those, those aren't moving. But what you do is you drill a pilot hole first because the center of this hole saw has a drill in the middle of it. And you drill a pilot hole and then you 
then you drill your your hole with the hole saw in the side of your bin and you can put it wherever you can put it high you can put it lower if it gets covered up with compost it's still okay you know it still lets air in the bin I actually put mine about in the middle toward, or toward the middle top see this one's here is because I this is not going to fill up with compost any more than that because that's going to be that's going to be too heavy for me to deal with so anyway put the hole wherever whatever's comfortable for you you drill your hole and you put one in either side. Now you can put it on the short side if you want to, it doesn't matter, short side, long side, wherever you want. I experimented with putting more holes, like four in there, and it, it's just really not necessary. The, the two vents let in plenty of air. You don't really need a, a third and fourth holes. Unless you, you know, if, but if you feel like you really want to, then go ahead. Um, something you can do, if you don't want to use the soffit vent, I've seen people put screen over the hole they drilled out with the soffit vent. I'm not really sure how you get the screen to stick to plastic. I've always had trouble getting glues that stick in plastic, but if you can find a glue that will stick plastic and you'll be able to put the screen there, then you can do that. So you drill the hole with the hole saw, and this is left over from another project. As you can see, see it drills right through the plastic. When you drill, you might want to set your drill at a very low torque. Because if, it, you've ever, if you have a real powerful drill and it's spinning real fast, what happens is that that hole saw hits the plastic and it can really chew it up. It'll just, it won't cut a smooth hole, it'll just chew it or crack the plastic. So get it, your drill powered down as, as slow as possible and just have it barely, like I kind of run mine like that, not even that fast like that when I'm doing it. And it kind of goes and it, it goes through it cuts the hole slowly instead of doing it real fast with a lot of power so that's a tip on that okay so then after you've cut your hole you need to cut some pantyhose so here's this is just you know cheap pantyhose and you cut a piece about this size and what you do is you take this is the vent okay so you put it on the inside the smaller end of the vent put it over like that and then you will, if this was a hole, I would pop it in there. And I take it like this and kind of hold it from the back and just pop it. And it should just poop, pop right in there. If it doesn't pop, then you will take out your box cutter knife type of thing and clean out the hole a little bit. Just clean it out and then try to pop it again and it should go. So you might have to clean a couple times. And then, like I said, you just pop it right in there like that. And then you're done. You're done. You have a lid. You put the lid on there. And you've just built a worm composting bin.